History records that ancient peoples used to believe in a god named Thoth, T-H-O-T-H, and that he was said to have the head of a bird, was incredibly intelligent, and was the source of geometry, astronomy, and medicine. He was also thought to have a hand in the building of the pyramids. Now, strangely enough, he was also thought to be one of the Atlanteans. The name Thoth is just one letter off of this planet that was the scene for the opening of the second in the series of the Star Wars movies, The Empire Strikes Back. And, of course, this place was a frozen wasteland from which the good guys had to escape. It very much mimicked what we see in Antarctica. And given that we see a lot of pyramids down there, and that during my investigation I have found evidence that there was the worship of birds down there, I found some new things today, and I think they're going to make you take pause. Now, everyone, I'm sure if you've been watching the uh, series of videos for a long time, remembers when I found this strange pictograph on the side of a mountain. Now, some have speculated that it's just random um, melt that's just turned into strange imagery. But I'd like to propose something. You see, we have a person that's clearly kneeling down here. We have the image of a bird here. We have the image of a bird here. And then we also have the head of a bird up here. Now, that the ice would just melt in those particular shapes randomly three straight times? Eh, I don't know. Once, maybe. Twice, wow, incredible coincidence. Three times, not so much. Here's what I'm proposing with this image, is that either what we're seeing, these images are in relief, meaning that even though it looks flat, these areas are higher than the rest, and that's why the snow has fallen away, or perhaps during that time they were painted and that perhaps those paints they had, the ancient peoples, had some type of a hydrophobic property to it. Or both. Or this both in relief, and they were painted. And over time, even though the paint has worn off, the properties have remained, and since they're in relief, this is what we're looking at. Now, this one particular place, you could probably dismiss. But next would, of course, I found what looks like this giant bent spine. But then at the very end of it, I missed, and I marked it today, this pyramid structure right here. And you would think it's here, but when you look at this closely, and this is the hard thing about 2D imagery for 3D things, it's a, here's one ridge, here's the other, and the other one's here. They were very fond, I think, of three-sided pyramids, not the four-sided ones that we see in other locations. I had also found this strange image over here of what appears to be a figure walking up the hillside. Very large figure. And it's hard to show up in the videos, but if you go to this um, location yourself, you'll see that right here, there's different coloration than the rock. The rock has kind of a very dark brown. This has almost a purplish to it. When you look in real close at this, it looks like something very, very different than just the rock around it. Now that's all old stuff, but the new stuff is pretty incredible. And it's not far away. I also had found here, this doesn't uncover in high res, 
but what looks very much like a series of pyramids because what you can see and it's very difficult to do it there's one here and I'm trying to outline for you the very best I can here and here this shows it a little bit better this is January 2012 this is 2013 you can definitely see the outlines of very distinct um, building marks now over here I want to get the aspect on this correct the idea of a bird I found what looks like and you've got to zoom in very very close to see this oh and I zoomed in just a little bit too close one second it's hard to do if you zoom in too close they bring you down to ground level but here's the eye here's the head and here's the beak That's about as close as I can get before it zooms me down to ground level. But there's something right here that is got a very purplish, dark tint to it that sticks out from everything else. Perhaps a very large gem that they decided to use as the eye of a bird. That would make sense for ancient man. They did type that type of thing. But you can see here's the mouth and the head. And very close to it, we have what looks like some kind of artificial structure underneath the snow that's causing melt above, and it's bleeding through. Now this here, this one is tough. This was a, a tough one to find. And it's going to be kind of hard to see, because if you look at it the wrong way, you'll see like the face from Mars. Because initially you think, okay, here's the eye and here's the mouth. I want you to look at this a little bit of a different way. Think of this, forget this part up here for a minute, this eye part. Think of this triangular part here as the eye. Here's the nose. Here's the mouth. And this over here starts this giant headdress over here. And here's what, what would be the ridge of, of his forehead. His eyes are here. The nose is here, the mouth is here, here's the chin down here. And then this is what looks like just about every image of an ancient Egyptian I've ever seen. This large headdress over here, the forehead, the triangular shaped eyes, down here is the nose, this would be the, the cheek, the mouth, and the chin. Do you see it now? That's about as detailed a face as I have ever seen in satellite imagery. And it's in this giant field of sapphire and turquoise where it looks like there was some type of a collapse and this is just the remnant of what was once a large statue. Now, up here, I use the term demon awakening a bit loosely, just because it's exactly what it looks like. We have a cave here, and we have the head of something just poking out, wondering what's out there. And you can see the facial structures here as well. Not as clear. But this is definitely not just ice and snow. This imagery over here, though, is pretty unmistakable. This is clearly an artificial ledge and a cave. I don't know if there's something else that moves back through here to connect all of this. But we're going to do a quick measurement just to give you a, um, a size on how big this opening is.
This first one is about 42 meters. So in uh, American, I guess, 46.86 yards. 50 yards, 150 feet across. Definitely big enough to fly something in and out of. And we'll clear that and we'll measure this ledge over here. This one's about 80 yards or 72.73 meters, basically. So large, very, very large. And from what looks like about seven meters, about 20 feet front to back and 73 that way. So clearly something that you could conduct activities on for sure. I've got a couple more things to show you, and that'll be it. This one was another tough one, but it takes a minute. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. Everyone is familiar with the elongated skulls that we have seen in Ancient Man? Well, this right here is one of those. Here's the eye, here's the nose, here's the mouth, here's the chin. Once you see this, you can zoom out and you will see it from a long way away. And like I, I always say, I'll put these links, um, or I should say, these coordinates, pardon me, in the description so that you can go here for yourself. This is the, of course, December. Um, I'm, actually, right now I'm looking at December 30, 2013, but it'll show up in 2012 as well. Either way. Over here, I found very much what looks like a dinosaur skull. I'm not sure what these shadows are right here, or what this uh, dotted regular indentation structure is, but pretty clear that this is a jaw and some type of an eye right here, nose. And this, of course, has to do with the melting of the ice down there, that things are just revealing themselves, and I think the uh, powers that be were hoping that uh, they could hide this, but they're not going to be able to for much longer, I don't think. Over here, this is just some more evidence that things are being hidden, because there's a very, very sharp peak I'm going to tilt the camera. I've always said the best way to do this is change your aspect. Don't look straight down. And when you look at this at a very steep angle, what you'll notice is that there is no peak casting this shadow. This very sharp peak right here. If you look, and it's hard to do without the aspect, at the ridge, there's no way this gentle sloping ridge is casting that peak. It just shows that they've covered something, but they forgot once again to cover the shadow. And, you know, they maybe they forgot or maybe they just didn't care because I don't think that they uh, thought that someone was going to go to this detail. And we have this again here. This is just called a mismatch ridge line. We've shown this before. And it does. It takes a lot of time, a lot of work. Um, doing this research is incredibly time intensive. It's a very, very large area. And sometimes if you guys see me go, you know, a day, a week, two weeks without doing a video on Antarctica, that basically means I just didn't find anything because there is lots of stuff out here where there's nothing to find. But here what we're showing is a very gentle sloping ridge, but then we're seeing a very sharp peak right here next to it. And, oh, I guess I do have a couple more things here. Um, not really sure on this one. It looks like some type of a covered structure with 
basically will look like turrets. I'm sure it's something else, but I can't think of a better word right now to um, describe what this looks like. There's one that's very easy to see, and then there's one kind of hidden back in the shadows here. So hard to say on that. Um, but what isn't hard to say is that what's going on here, this is an artificial light source. There's no way that you should be getting that kind of light in this dark shadow unless it was coming from underneath. And doesn't this entire thing right here kind of look like a sphinx a little bit? Just a thought. And it's, it's almost impossible to not find what looks like gold. And in this case, there's some very, very dark, dark red. I'm not sure if this is ruby or fire. It almost looks like something is ignited underneath the snow there. And one of the reasons I do the videos this way is so that you can look at what I'm showing you, and then I give you the coordinates, and then you can go look for yourself. And you don't have to take my personal word for it. You know, you can believe it or you cannot. It's totally up to you. I just want you to have all of the information, and then you can make the judgment for yourself. And I know I thought that was the end, but I guess not. There was more things than uh, I thought. We've talked about these tunnels before. This was a tough one to find. But I want you to look at this real close on the res. See this right here? You see how it just goes down and ends right here? That happens not just once, but twice along the exact same line. And we found these in the last two or three videos. So we will leave that there, but Thoth, this is uh, what I think we're looking at, perhaps the evidence of that. So you guys have a great day. Like, share, subscribe, and we will see you next time. Thank you.